Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. On today's episode, we're going to talk about organic fertilizers and what NPK is and how to calculate it. According to Colorado State University, an organic fertilizer is any fertilizer material that is derived from natural sources that has a known amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This can be things like seaweed, rock powders, uh, manures, anything that's from a natural source. So by definition, these fertilizers and amendments have to include known amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So what is NPK? Well, NPK refers to the percent by weight that these elements make up of the material that you're adding. By industry standard, they include the other molecules, not just the elemental numbers of say nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but they're more common forms. So for nitrogen, it comes in three different organic forms, ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite. Phosphorus is more commonly found in P2O5, and potassium in K2O. So if you have results, such as the elemental results that we've been presenting in our lab results, you'll need to convert them from the elemental results to the combined organic molecule, and then milligrams per kilogram, which is roughly parts per million, to percent, which is parts per 100. So what this will allow us to do is to compare our free local resources to say a commercial product and really compare apples to apples when you're taking a look at what option you want to use. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to figure out the percent of the organic molecule that our elemental number makes up. In order to do this, we're going to use atomic weights. What atomic weights are is essentially the weight of the element. Every element on the periodic table has its weight and they're all unique. So let's use potassium as an example. It's most commonly found in nature and organically available in the form K2O, which means for every one atom of oxygen, there are two potassium atoms. Potassium has a molecular weight of 39.1 whereas oxygen has a molecular weight of 16. So when you add together 2 times 39.1, which is the potassium, to 1, 16.0, which is the oxygen, you end up with 94.2, which is the combined molecular weight of that molecule. So you take the combined molecular weight of the potassium in this organic molecule. You divide it by the total weight of the organic molecule, which is 94.2, multiply that by 100, and that gives you the percent weight of the potassium of 83.01. It's now time to start converting. You take that 83.01 minus 100, you end up with 16.99. Divide that by 100 and add 1. And what this will allow you to do is to take the result of 20,000 milligrams per kilogram and add the weight of the oxygen to that number. You end up with 23,398. And that is the corrected number for the results to make sure that you include the entire molecular weight of that organic molecule. So in order to go from parts per million or milligrams per kilogram to percent, which is parts per 100, simply divide this total number by 10,000. What you end up with is 2.34. This 2.34 represents the K in NPK of this particular example. So as many of you know, one of my goals this year is to test my own garden practices and assumptions. In order to do this, I've already submitted and presented results for say fall leaves and the use. I compared that against rock dust to see how they stacked up against each other, but this really verified my use of fall leaves as a mineral accumulator in my soil. In order to continue this testing, I've submitted spent coffee grounds, coffee, and comfrey to see if the science and the analysis really support my use of these free and local resources in the garden for their various different uses that I've promoted to you in the past. So we've sent these numbers in to Maxim Analytics, and we're gonna use this video to show you how to convert those numbers to, to NPK, and then take a look at the trace elements. Over the next few weeks, I'll be presenting the results for the used coffee grounds, coffee and comfrey, to see if the science supports my garden practices. I'll be putting all of these videos in a playlist that I've created called the Testing Garden Assumptions Playlist. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.